Pro Bowlers Tour on ESPN is being brought to you by Fairlanes. By Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by Rudd Air Conditioning. To get comfort, you got to get Rudd. Now let's preview tonight's top five. 30-year-old Nikki Giannullius of Vallejo, California, will open up championship round play this evening against eight-time LPBT champion Leanne Barrett of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The winner of that very first match will then take on 22-year-old Sharon Todd, who is shooting for her first ever professional victory. Starting from the runner-up position, it's 13-time champion Lori Nichols. She is vying for her first singles title since 1987. And as a result of averaging 212.2 for 42 games this week, Michelle Mullen of Max, Illinois, will need to capture just one game in order to collect a check worth $9,000 and notch her first ever LPBT championship. Welcome, everyone, to Fairlane Shady Grove, located in Gaithersburg, Maryland, for tonight's championship round finals of the $50,000 Lady Fairlanes Open. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, and welcome to the free state, the state of Maryland. Working with me once again this evening, Leila Wagner. And, Leila, we have an outstanding telecast, five very solid players. Let's start from the bottom of the stack, Nikki Giannullius. I tell you, Denny, Nikki finally broke her uh, losing streak last fall, and uh, she likes to win, and we can never count her out. All right, let's take a look at Leanne Barrett. Uh, four championship round appearances in five shows. When will it end? <laughs> Could be next year. However, I tell you, with Leanne Barrett, she started the week out very soon slow, but she qualified 17th. She came around last night in the final four games, and here she is tonight. If there is an unanswered question here this evening in our field of five, it would be the number three seed, Sharon Todd. Well, Sharon Todd's a young and upcoming player. I don't think we can overlook Sharon with her collegiate experience, and we can talk about that later in the show. All right. Lori Nichols, a good buddy of yours, came out of nowhere, nearly led this thing with a big charge last evening. She sure did. She threw nine straight strikes last night to try to take over over that top seed. I've never seen Lori with as much determination as she has this evening. Michelle Mullen out of Matson, Illinois, nearly led this one from start to finish, only finishing up in the number two position after two rounds of play. She led it by just two sticks, though. She struggled last night. She did. I think Michelle's feeling the pressure in that number one seed. She has been on the telecast in the past. However, it's always been in the first match. I think she'll have to try to deal with just winning one game for the title. That could be tough for her. All right. Last year, she, of course, bowled for the U.S. Open Championship, losing in the championship game. But the top seed position with the 24 hours in between between, it's got to be tough. It is. It's hard to relax, and, uh, you know, you don't get on the lanes for an hour and 15 minutes after you come off of them. They change a lot. The conditions change, and it's a lot of pressure to deal with. Well, we'll be, will we be crowning a brand-new champion here this evening? Only time will tell. We'll come back with the opening match featuring two of the outstanding right-handed players on the LPBT Tour, Nikki Giannullius and the boomer from Oklahoma, Leanne Barrett. Fair lanes open, the ladies fair lanes open. Nikki Giannullius opts to start on lane 13 here to open up the match. Championship pair 13 and 14. An inter interesting match, Denny. Nikki and Leanne Barrett opened up the match last year in the 89 Fairlanes Capital Classic, which is in nearby Hyattsville. Actually, uh, our Maryland stop at this time of the year. So, uh, However, Nikki went up the ladder and finished third. Well, a flush strike on lane 13, and uh, one of the stories we want to try and develop here this evening is the fact that the ladies play quite a bit further out throughout the week. Tonight, the lanes appear to be much tighter. They do. It seems to players are going to have to go a little bit more direct, uh, actually almost pointing the ball towards the pocket rather than going away. The only player that's really going away with the ball is Leanne Bear. She is able to get the ball back. As you can see here, the ball went all the way out to about the third board, yet she's got that strong roll and is able to come back in the last 10 feet. So Leanne matches strike for strike in the early stages. A look at Leanne's game. Now, she's changed recently to a four-step approach. She's trying to go a little bit more straighter in her approach, but look how low she is at the line and just tremendous leverage and roll on the ball. Leanne averaged 217.5 here on the championship round pair four championship round appearances in five events thus far. That's about as good as you can get. A soft 10 that time for Leanne, who would have loved to have opened up with a double. You bet. You always like to open up with those strikes. However, that ball just not quite driving hard enough in order to get that six pin to do the job. 
On up the line, Sharon Todd from Bowling Green, Kentucky. She qualifies third. Lori Nichols, number two, and Michelle Mullen of Batson, Illinois, our top seed this week. <laughs> Cross lane, no problem whatsoever. Nikki Giannullius, one of the uh, more deliberate players on the national tour. Nikki likes to take her time, Denny. She's uh, very methodical. She knows what it takes to win, and you've got to concentrate, and uh, she does that. Her last title was in 1989 at the Lady Fairlanes Open in Houston, where we mentioned she broke a two-year drought with a win there. Starts out here with a double. Nikki, also with a four-step approach, very basic game, pushes the ball out on the first step, low to the line. A lot of women get all their power from their legs, as you can see here how powerful and strong her release and follow-through are. direct line and she opens up with the three bagger. Leanne Barrett just 22 years of age and already in a short span of time has collected eight career titles. She's the LPBT's leading money winner, lead, leading point getter thus far and leading average. Well, you asked me when it would stop, Denny, and I mentioned in the opening probably not till next year, just meaning that this lady could actually become bowler of the decade the way the, that she bowls and her ability. Just a bad break there. Looked like the head pin went off the wall and came back and nudged the 10, but couldn't quite get it to fall. A lot of pin action when that happens. Watch the head pin here as it's going to slide against the left wall. And here it comes, but doesn't quite make it. Well, it appears as if the cross lane spares to the right weren't nearly as difficult this week as the cross laners to the left. Well, no, when you go across to, to the left, Denny, you're not sure if the ball's going to hook early on you or else if you're going to hit that oil line and the ball slides. So uh, they made them a little tricky. Leanne Barrett, our runner-up last week, losing to Cindy Coburn in the final match. And disaster for the boom players, the 2 8 10. Exactly. Those players that come real hard in the back end, the last few feet of the lane, the ball makes a sharp break. This is the result. It's okay to hook it if you can get it back and hit the pocket, but an open frame of the 2 a 10 in the fourth puts Nikki Giannullius on top here in the early stages of the Lady Fairlanes Open. And this is while we were away. Actually creams them for the turkey, as you might say. Flush. Impressive shot for Leanne Barrett. Could cut the lead to just 11 pins if she strikes here in the eighth. plenty of room and she has come back with a four bagger. Two just excellent shots by the end. Michelle Mullen just second after round number two and uh, hung on last night to lead by two pins. Look at Leanne started 41st, 29th, made a big move and just kept on heading for the telecast. That's what we mentioned in the opening how she started out the tournament slow. Nikki staying right up there most all the rounds. Clutch shot, pressure shot for Nikki G here now in the eighth to kind of maintain pace. Doesn't want to make any mistakes and open up the door for the end. Leaves the two pin, but that ball was kind of fading away once it head to the pocket. Really didn't have the lift on at that time, Denny. Didn't get through that shot and have as much uh, turn on the ball. Ball just in a slide, never getting into that hook. Both of these players have tremendous velocity on the ball. Two of the most powerful players on the tour. Uh-oh. Now, we mentioned those left-handed spares, Denny. 
that's exactly what could happen. Spares to the left side of the lane and uh, got a little bit careless. You could see she kind of opened her hand up to, to fudge the ball a little bit, and at the last moment, the ball takes off, and oh my goodness, best game she could shoot now would be 233. Meanwhile, if Leanne strikes out, she could shoot 245. Just opened the door right up. Costly error there in the ninth, eighth frame. Can't tell you how many one pin and two pin spares I saw missed here last night in the championship round uh, finals the f final round of the tournament by players who were missing to the left and uh, if you weren't very very careful if you didn't keep your speed up same thing happened to Nikki exactly the ball just hitting the center of the lane and just taking off left well gonna have to gather herself now after a re-rack and she could still shoot 223 but she needs a strike here to get started with just a great shot right there. Opened up the can on that one. Maybe opened up the can, but uh, the door swung wide open when she missed the single pin spare in the eighth. Had she spared there, both players would have had 245 possibilities. So a big giveaway. Now let's see Leanne Barrett taking a little extra time to make sure that she strikes here in the ninth. Set it a little short, up jumps the big four, and both players are uh, playing giveaway here in the latter stages of game number one. No, I don't want it. Denny, you take it. That's just exactly what they're playing. Now, she does set a little bit short, causing the ball to get into a hook a little bit too soon. The ball didn't slide long enough to hold line, and uh, she knows that uh, that was not a good shot. Uh-oh. Picks up. 6-10 for count purposes. Now a game of 2-0-7 if she would strike out. So Nikki Giannoulias may need just a mark in the 10th. Amazing how it changes so quickly. Leanne's second open of the match. She left the 2-8-10 in the 4th. Leanne checking out the scoreboard, asking our tournament director, Fran Wolf, what she needs as we take a look at the scoreboard. There you see a couple of major breakdowns for both players late in match number one. Oh. And that's going to end the evening for Leanne Barrett, who goes big four, big five here. And we're not talking about East Coast college basketball. We're talking about bowling here at uh, Shady Grove. Well, this is one of the downfalls of having that downfalls of having that big hook, Denny. That ball just breaks in so sharply at the last minute, and if it doesn't hold line, you can end up with uh, low counts like the big four in the Greek church. Tell you what, it's tough to shoot eight, 84, 184 with a four-bagger. <laughs> I mean, well, three big splits in there. Wow. Well, Nikki Giannoulias needs uh, one pin here in the 10th frame to advance, and uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. and Think she'll get it? Yeah. Okay. I feel real confident. <laughs> Thought we were going to see another big four. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. The fans are a little stunned here. I think they felt like Leanne may just take it right off the sheet and uh, head into game number two. Meanwhile, Nikki has to feel extremely fortunate. Well, a lot of times, Denny, too, you let up on your speed just a little bit and the ball just breaks real sharply for you. So you want to ma maintain that velocity on the ball. Leanne will finish up fifth here this week after finishing second last week, and it'll be off to Hilton Head Island, South Carolina for the 22-year-old right-hander. Meanwhile, Nikki Giannoulias with a strike would shoot 213, and uh, her thoughts now turn to game number two and Sharon Todd. Well, Nikki's got a, an advantage here, Denny. She sees how the lanes are changing. She knows the mistakes she's made. She just has to uh, bear down and throw some strikes. As many bad breaks as Nikki Giannoulias has received in the championship round over the past couple of years. Uh, she's over duty at a couple of good ones. I think she has uh, the mere second place finishes on our tour. Well, <laughs> if not, she's darn close. She's seen that runner-up position a few times too many, I can tell you that. So Nikki G with a strike and a 213-184 victory over Leanne Barrett. We'll be back with match number two featuring a talented right-hander from the state of Kentucky, Sharon Todd.
Get your credit card and call 1-800-541-BOWL or send your check to P.O. Box 888, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 10159. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express accepted. Call now. Elaine Blumenberg, uh, our alternate this week, finishing up sixth. Lisa Wagner was second, dropped to seventh. And uh, Donna Sipnuski from Dayton, Ohio. I had to take the top one. Kim Terrell, the rookie of the year, finishing in tenth position. And you see Jeannie Maiden rounding up in 15th. Mm -hmm. As we look through the rest of the top 24 as they finished their 42 games this week. Karen Ellingsworth on the telecast last week. Betty Morris, number 17. Oh, player of the year last year, Ron, Robin Romeo finishing up in 18th. And, of course, we have to mention that Judy Sutar <laughs> celebrated her 16th anniversary yesterday. Husband Dave, not available to be here, but Judy did make the top 24. And uh, always nice to get a check on your anniversary, I would say. You bet. Cindy Coburn Carroll there finishing up uh, in 32nd after winning last week. And Donna Miller Mackey with the final check this week. As we take a look at uh, ESPN's tennis coverage coming up tomorrow, women's tennis, the Bausch and Loam Championships, live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, live coverage all the way through Sunday. Do you think you could beat the... Uh, the new 14-year-old sensation, oh. or is it 13? I think she's only 13. No, she's 14. Jennifer? Just an old-timer, huh? She's, a, she's old. <laughs> <laughs> what a player. Well, we're back to live action here. And the Lady Fairlanes open. Nikki Giannoulias with a 213-184 topsy-turvy seesaw victory over Leanne Barrett is uh, ready to start match number two. eight remains. The bucket was there for a moment or so. I think what we might start seeing, Denny, is the conditioner carrying down a little bit farther and the players not quite getting as much break in the back end as uh, the evening goes on. Now, the last couple shots, uh, Nikki actually threw the ball, did hook, she made the adjustment, and now she left the 2-8. Key double for her was in the sixth and the seventh, and missed the two pin in the eighth was fortunate to advance. And here's one of those left-handed spares we mentioned. However, this one with the sleeper, so she's going very hard at it. However, the ball's still taken off to the left as she shakes her head. Really an overreaction as the best way that I can state it. You uh, have to be very, very careful when you're shooting anything on the left side. Overreaction is what you get a lot on short oil, the limited distance dressing that uh, we see out here on the women's tour. The lanes are oiled 23 and a half feet. And lanes get real tricky. Uh, over the diplomat. Strike for Sharon Todd, who opens up here on the right-hand lane. Take a look at Sharon's game. Now, she has a five-step approach with a small first step. Starts the ball very low, almost like the Marshall Holman style. Look how far she's bent at the waist. She comes around the side of the ball, almost suitcases it. And gets a lot of side turn. But she's accurate. Not a lot of knee bend. Almost very straight leg. Trying to play pretty direct. Uh, she leaves the four pin. Told me that to stay out of trouble this week. She went to some shinier equipment throughout the week and pretty much tried to just go up and at him and not swing the ball too much. We have the best angle for carry if you go more direct coming from that outside line. A lot of times players and amateurs alike will tend to try to go to the softer equipment and try to create that big hook when you're actually better off to go straighter at the pins with a, a harder, shinier surface bowling ball. Stood up a little on that shot, but uh, a sigh of relief and a spare for Sharon Todd in the second. Sharon actually having problems in practice sliding, and it looked as if she stuck on that shot as she came back on the approach. She slid her foot a little bit, uh, making sure she would slide. So uh, she might have a little footwork problem here. Nikki G trying to right herself after an open in the first frame. That one's past the head pin, and she leaves the one, two, eight. So uh, the search continues. Now, one thing when you're late with the ball, 
fast with your feet timing gets off and it was apparent that that's what she did she sent that ball way out to the right it's not in time and after you miss the two eight the last thing you want to do is shoot the one two eight <laughs> <laughs> right exactly yeah. no fun now she should move to the left to try to play a little bit straighter at it rather than standing to the right and trying to cross lane. Well, no problem whatsoever there. As she crosses over, next in line will be Lori Nichols of Algonquin, Illinois. And then, of course, our top seed, Michelle Mullen of Matson, Illinois. Nikki, when I mentioned a few ball drillers that have been helpful to her recently, Dawn Neendorf and Mark Robbie and Ed Beltry. And uh, it's very important to have a ball that fits correctly. And uh, you find somebody that works for you, you need, you need to stick with them. Her match play record now in championship round appearances, 31 victories, 38 losses. Trying to get back to 500. <laughs> Once again, 2-4-5, and people at home are probably saying, well, geez, I saw her throw some strikes in the opening game. What's the problem? But lane conditioner moves around out there. It sure does, and uh, I think Nikki felt she threw a good shot, and uh, she made the adjustment off the 2-8 on lane 13 last time. However, the ball still slid longer, and like I mentioned, with that 23 and a half feet of conditioner, it carries down quickly, and the lanes change quickly. No surprise there. Left-hand lane and the left side of the left-hand lane has posed all sorts of problems for Nikki Giannoulias, who has opened again, this time missing the 2-4-5. Tori Romeo again, our foul line judge this week. Tomorrow's profile, huh? <laughs> I wonder if we're getting her good side. And this is her angle. To make sure that nobody fouls, let's see if we see a... Oh, no problem there. A little problem with the shot as it uh, nearly went into the channel at about 45 feet. Sharon once again sliding again at the foul line. She's actually sticking. She's rubbing her foot now on the approach. When you don't get a good slide, your leverage is gone, and that's exactly what happened. That ball almost went in the channel. That's what I said. That was close. <gasps> about four or five boards right of where she was trying to throw it, I think. Yeah? Well, your footwork is so important, Denny, and uh, I, I can't stress enough. Well, uh, there's her husband, Steve, looking on, and uh, by a whisker that time, uh, she picks up the head pin. <gasps> That's a hair. The wind. <laughs> the wind. As Mike Durbin would say, by a freckle. <laughs> Steve actually uh, drove nine hours to watch his wife bowl this evening. Great uh, supporter in her game. Both of them met at Moorhead State. It's a faithful husband. He knows who the, he knows who the breadwinner is. <laughs> no, he is a uh, manager of a bowling center. It's a bowling family, no question about that. Good player in his own right. And they worked very hard on each other's games. Really enjoy the sport of bowling. It's uh, nice to see a young couple like that getting an opportunity to play on the national tour. I know he uh, has probably bowled some PBA regionals. I think he's maybe wondering about uh, playing out there full time. Well, that's a tough job too. So yeah. you get both, both members of the family traveling in different directions. Well, Lisa and Kent Wagner would know more about that, right? You bet. Uh-oh. Well, she asked it to hook back and it never did get to the three pin. So an open now for Sharon Todd. And this one changes around a little bit. She leads now by just eight. Playing. A little duller ball going out to about the second, third board as it breaks back on the last 10 feet of the lane. Here's her spare attempt, and uh, once again, that leaning tower, she helped to convert this spare. Okay, that was in the seventh. And she now trails, as you see, by three pins as we head into the home stretch here of game number two. The winner takes on Lori Nichols. The ball not driving. Six-pin lane in the channel. And 
Sharon disappointed with that shot. She's kind of executed her game plan, Leala, pretty much like she did throughout the tournament. She's hit in the pocket, but three consecutive ten pins have kind of slowed her pace. Well, she's gone from the actual ringing ten pin, trying to make the adjustment to a little bit flatter ten pins. So there's slight adjustments there, and uh, she's leaving them both ways. Consecutive spares of the ten, and if he could offer some advice, what would it be? Start hoping a lot. <laughs> Prayer, right? Prayer. <laughs> Nikki looking for a turkey, and to extend her lead to fourteen. opened up a 14-pin lead and could wave goodbye shortly here. It appears she has lane 14 down now, as you can see this ball coming into your living room, and here it hits. Really getting through that ball nicely, and here's her reaction. She's talking to it. Possible 225 for Nikki Giannullius, who has already defeated Leanne Barrett, 213 to 184. Storms with a four-bagger into the latter stages of game number two, and uh, she's got her hands on this one. One thing you have to admire, Denny, is Nikki is trusting the ball. Now in lane 13, she's really never gone high. She's been making those slight adjustments, and she's still trusting it. As I mentioned, basically before she went on the run, hey, what about another ball? And you said, no, she's going to stick with her instincts, maybe just kind of make the little adjustments. That's what she's done. Sharon Todd, who throws her hands up in the air and says, oh my goodness, the 10 pin went down. Well, without three 10 pins in a row, she could have had a five bagger. So uh, I guess this means victory in her eyes anyway to carry all 10. Thank you. It's about time. <laughs> well, if she strikes out, it's a game of 2 one Unfortunately, it's uh, not going to be enough here. Good extension with that shot. So once she had an opportunity to double, she took advantage. Well, that's important, Denny, and you always learn every telecast you make. You learn a little bit more, and you get a little bit more relaxed for the next time. So she can take and look back at the tape and say, hey, I made some good shots. Throws this one, and she forces Nikki to mark. Tournament high game, 299, just missing that 300 game. Did she leave a 10 pin? I'll tell you the truth, I wasn't here. <laughs> Let's hope it wasn't. Nice comeback, though, for Sharon Todd, who obviously has uh, changed the complexion here of the 10th frame anyway. Steve looking up, calculating exactly what Nikki needs. Now we've seen the big four and the big five. The Greek church uh, jump up, so once again, we can't count her out yet. Well, I think he would open in the 10th. It would be a game in the 190s. So she needs a spare in the 10th to advance into the semifinal game. Nice comeback. Gutsy performance for Sharon Todd, who leaves yet another 10 to her fourth here of game number two. But a solid game of 200. Nikki taking her time here in the 10th frame. Oh, my goodness. Excellent shot for Nikki Giannoulias, who just eliminates a very disappointed Sharon Todd. She mounted a nice charge. She did, and uh, there's nothing more professional than Nikki walking up and uh, striking when you need a spare. You go for the strike. You don't just go for the spare. Yeah, you have to stay aggressive. Very. Mm -hmm.
one's lost in space, but it doesn't make any difference for Nikki Giannullius, who will advance into the semifinal game. And uh, she'll take on Lori Nichols, but for Sharon Todd, a fourth place finish, $2,500 check, and uh, only a question of time before Sharon Todd ends up in the winner's circle out here. This is her fifth appearance in the championship round. In 1990, she is now has two fourth place finishes. So, starting out the year, very good. Two championship round appearances out of five shows. Not too bad. We'll advance into the semifinal game now. The Lady Fair Lanes open, and it'll be Nikki Giannoulias and Lori Nichols. Or send your check to P.O. Box 888, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 10159. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express accepted. Call now. A field of 79 players started the Lady Fairlanes Open here this week. They averaged a cash, just a fraction better than 193. To make it at the top 24, 197.5. And to get to the telecast, 208.76. And uh, some sizable money up for grabs. You bet. A nice prize list here. First place, $9,000. Wrapping up fifth, 2100 Nikki Giannoulias, winner of two matches thus far and averaging 212 this evening in the championship round. We'll now take on Lori Nichols, who made a big time move to be the top seed here last evening. Lori Willey coming on strong shot games of 279 and 264. And uh, when you bowl games like that, it's easy to jump the field. The amazing thing was against Michelle Mullen in the position round game, she started with the first nine and then left the big four in the tenth. And the count cost her because she lost the lead by two pins. Nikki G after the re-rack in the opening frame. Didn't make much difference as she leaves the 3-6-10 and also the 9 with it. Nikki playing right around that second arrow. Is it, if she hits inside the second arrow, the ball hooks left. And if she hits outside of it, the ball actually slides. So she's playing in a very critical area, as we've seen Sharon Todd and Leanne Barrett actually playing outside the first arrow. Tough, tough cross-lane spare conversion here. And the problem is to get the 9-pin out. She's had problems with spares this evening uh, on the left side, but uh, covered that one perfectly. That's weird. You get a little more skid if you're going cross lane to the right, and you get the runaway freight train if you're going left. Well, you get that track area, Denny, that pops up uh, between the, actually, the second and fourth arrow on most all lanes. Back to live action. Lori Nichols right up the track, through the nose, the big four, and uh, that's what she saw last night in the tenth frame. Lori really having problems here in the championship rounds. Uh, hasn't been able to win since 1987. So it's been a, a long dry spell for her. After that shot, her husband Terry, an avid Blackhawks fan, might be asking for some kind of a penalty. Two minutes in the box, perhaps. Mm -hmm. yeah. let's, let's rethink. Regroup now and uh, start start the game over. Still has nine frames left. A look around. The capacity crowd here at Fairlane Shady Grove. She'll have to shake off the mistake in the first and bounce back quickly. Lori felt she bowled better in the evening round. She said the lanes actually got tighter in the morning. The back ends uh, right before the pins there were hooking so much for that she had that over under reaction in the evening when the conditioner carried down she was able to get, go a little bit more direct and have the ball hold we saw in the first two frames here the ball hasn't held for her so uh, she could be in trouble leaving the three and the six in the second frame of course the proud owner of Laura Nichols Algonquin Lanes in Algonquin Illinois that's hard to say isn't it well <laughs> say it fast three times perhaps right Stay there. All right. Three sixes out of the way. Lori with a spare in the second. A pair of uh, multiple champions battling here for the rights to take on Michelle Mullen, looking to win her first ever championship. And Nikki really having the advantage, as I mentioned before, in the last game. Once again, she's seen how the lanes are changing. She's getting more and more comfortable with the crowd, with being on television and. Uh, pressure's actually just building. Your adrenaline builds. By the head pin, the 287. Now this, 
this, my friend, is a tricky split conversion. Very difficult for a right-hander. You actually want to hit, normally with just the 2-7, you'd want to hit on the left-hand side. But if you hit on the left-hand side, Denny, you're not going to pick up that A-pin behind there. So she's actually going to want to cover this from the right. All right, just for the fun of it, I'm going to go on a limb okay. and think positive. Okay. I think she's going to make this. Looks good. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Two pin went right by the seven. Excellent try for Nikki G. And, uh, boy, anything to the left this evening has been a real problem. Actually, that's a surprise to me, Denny, because they pulled a coat of finish here just three days before the tournament started. And when they do that, the condition actually holds up a little bit better, and you don't see that track area coming out. So what they've done is they've lightened up on the oil in the center of the lane and uh, it's causing the ball to hook early. Keep that thought. I've got a question for you momentarily. More speed up the track, slashing at the rack. Nikki G bounces back with a strike in the third. Was it easier? to convert spares in the days of long oil than it is in short oil. Oh, I would say definitely easier. But do you throw more strikes on short oil? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> well, now that we've conducted our own survey... <laughs> <laughs> it's actually that uh, it's just changed the game so much. The, the moves are so different. If you grew up on long oil, your moves are the opposite of what they are now with short oil. A look at Lori's game, a five-step approach. She doesn't use much of the approach for having five steps. Once again, very basic. Not a lot of knee bend at the line. But good leverage. Gets through the ball. Real strong. And late. Late timing. But a good result. You bet. Trying to double up that one through the nose. This time the 3-6 and the 10. Lane 13 appearing to be giving her a little problem as she shakes her head and says, hey, you know, I thought I made the adjustment. It didn't work. Lori bowled extremely well last night in the final eight games and basically bowled the majority of the games in the low end of the house, which for her was obviously the best end. And she said, you know, I, I've been struggling with my timing and worked and worked and worked on it, and I kind of fell into it last night. And uh, obviously she's still having a few problems as she leans a little bit and gets the six to take out the ten. We'll be back with more of the semifinal match right after this. Afternoon at 5 Eastern only on ESPN. A clutch shot when she needed it. Right on line, straight down the boards here, right about the ninth board, and it just holds line. Key double for Nikki G, who leads by eight. Could be 18 if she strikes here. Oh, my. Solid nine pin. No, no, no. That's not supposed to stand. No, it's not. You see it more and more in the days of the year thing. And uh, some of the outstanding executives from Fairlanes Incorporated on hand for the championship of the Lady Fairlanes Open. Fairlanes Incorporated with 112 bowling centers throughout the United States, and that represents better than 4,000 lanes. And a great supporter of the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour. No doubt about that. What does that do to you mentally when you think you've thrown an absolutely perfect shot, you're on a double trying to grab some momentum, and the stupid nine pin stands? <laughs> That's exactly what you say. Oh. <laughs> You really just have to shake a shot off like that, Denny, because uh, it was good, and it, you know it's just a bad break, and you just have to come back next time. Laurie struck the last time on lane 14, and uh, she's become very familiar with that spare this evening. So far, she's been uh, through the nose four times. And she hasn't missed right. You have to trust the ball. Lori actually starting the year off a little slow. She uh, took a nice vacation in Hawaii and wasn't able to practice as much as uh, she said she'd like to. But, you know, you get this stage of the game, you've been on the tour this many years, uh, you deserve those uh, vacations. Ah, uh, yes, and that gentleman there will be the incoming president of the Bowling Proprietors Association of America, Mr. Wally Hall, the chairman of the board of Fairlanes Incorporated. Had a nice chat with Wally and uh, told me that... Uh, 
that he was going to try and relax a little bit here in the next couple or three weeks. I don't believe him, but he told me he was going to try. And a nice fellow oh, he yeah. is. Loves the game of bowling and told me, he said, Denny, you know, I think we really as an industry have to begin to promote, educate, stimulate, teach the, the new players throughout the country to really get involved in our game. And I think he's right on the money with that statement. Oh, you bet. We'll see uh, some, maybe some dramatic changes here from the Bowling Proprietors Very Association. So. Well, Lori missing right. We said she needed to trust it, and she did just that on lane 13, and she left the bucket. So there's that over-under reaction we've mentioned before this evening. Well, 2-4-5 goes unconverted, and uh, it's open frame number two now for Lori Nichols, who has 91 through the sixth, not the kind of effort she was hoping for. Lori shooting actually from the left side. The ball stayed in a slide. She's seen Nikki miss this to the left so many times this evening that uh, she gave up the room. There's one thing Nikki G has done. It's kind of jump out ahead and... Uh, watch her opponents falter and she's normally taken advantage of when they have good shot there but she leaves the soft 10 pin six pin not quite up to the challenge of taking out the 10. once again that shiny surface bowling ball we've mentioned is not quite breaking hard enough on that particular shot and uh, stayed in a slide too long that's why she left the 10. nikki 12 wins 12 losses in match play this week has a very sore hand. Do you see the tape on both fingers? A lot of the players uh, tape their fingers also, Denny, for the tendons to keep them very tight. It relieves some of the pain. Just kind of grinding this game out a little bit, trying to stay ahead, and uh, she leads by 23. You mentioned tendons. Uh, Lori Nichols recently was diagnosed with uh, carpal tunnel. Um, a wrist problem, uh, the tendons in her wrist, and eventually it'll have to be operated on. Her whole hand goes numb, so she's really had uh, some problems in the last few years with her back, and uh, now her wrist, she doesn't know how much longer she can go without having it operated on. Well, you don't bowl as many games in as tough a competition as she has through all these years and not suffer the consequences sooner or later. Well, that was a little tough shot through the nose, and the break of the night. For Nikki G in the seventh. She leads by 23, trying to win her third consecutive game and get to the championship match here in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Sometimes you look down there and uh, you just don't see anything. Lori leaving the two pin on the right hand lane in the seventh, and uh, she picked that up, but she trails by 23 here in the eighth. She's getting that to over under reaction, Denny. And uh, actually, both of these players playing right around that second arrow, and that's where they're getting that uh, reaction. Once again, Leanne and Sharon Todd playing out around the first arrow. So uh, I think the better of the two, sh two angles is uh, a little bit farther out to the right. Best finish for Lori Nichols this year was a tie for eighth in the Yuma Open. Career television match play record, 32 wins and 49 setbacks. That's been the, uh, the sore spot and an otherwise outstanding career. Championship round, she just hasn't been able to win, although Nikki Giannoulias hasn't exactly uh, taken advantage of television bowling either. The manager of uh, Fairlane Shady Grove, Marsha Garrett, very uh, helpful this week to all the players, and boy, did they put on a nice spread here for food and beverages. Yep, said she really enjoyed the professionals and was looking for some high scores, and they got some. No 300 games, but the game close at 299. Nikki G flirting with disaster on a strike in the seventh. If she could have doubled up there, it might have been good night for Lori Nichols. Letting up on her speed that time, Danny, and the ball just hooked left. Trying to stay clean. Shoot an even par round, as they say sometimes. Even par is a good score. Sometimes that's all it takes. She's already defeated Leanne Barrett, 213 to 184, and Sharon Todd, 211 to 200. So a deuce or better this evening appears to be a winning score. Stairs have uh, kept us on the edge of our sheets, our sheets, our seats this evening. <laughs> It's been a tiptoeing performance for the majority of our <laughs> finalists. Uh, they throw those shots at spares, and then it's kind of like uh, wait and wonder. I don't know. I kind of like.
like to see longer oil all the time myself. I think it makes for more accurate uh, mm -hmm. playing, actually. Different role, too. Mm -hmm. Well, Nikki G, this one is hers to win. Problem, get a little right of your target, and you leave the two, four, five, set it down a little short, and it goes through the nose. Long oil makes it more accurate, but these players are uh, definitely making it look like you have to be very, very accurate. Well, when the oil carries down, or if you don't strip the back ends with a short oil, then you got some serious problems. And then you have the track area actually absorbing uh, the conditioner as well. Twelfth year is that? professional, a substantial career earnings of almost $300,000. And a left side spare that she converted. Nikki mm -hmm. G, if she strikes out, shoot 201. Now, meanwhile, for Lori Nichols, if she could go off the sheet, a game of 189, which would force Nikki G to at least spare in the tenth. Lori moving a little farther right that time. A little farther right with the feet, I think, and trying to angle it up and in a little bit. She trips out the four. Now it's a question of trying to figure out the adjustment on lane 13. Well, I think, once again, you're in that uh, disaster area right around that second arrow, that track area, just uh, inside the second arrow. If you hit, it's it's just left. And I think uh, Nikki's been very fortunate to have uh, been able to win and remain there. More speed, juiced it up. Oh, my, what a comeback for Lori Nichols as uh, the veteran makes the big move, but the question now is, is it too little too late? Possibly, however, uh, one more. She forces Nikki to spare, and uh, as we've seen this evening, spares are not easy. Sharon Owen did the same thing, or Sharon Todd, I should say. Forced her to mark, and Nikki, of course, stepped up and threw a strike. This is the key shot. Will it hold the pocket? No. And Lori knew it as soon as she let it go. It's a shame because that was a clutch double in the ninth and the tenth. Now the best she could do would be 177. And so... Well, actually, uh, it does force Nikki to at least get good count. Get nine on the first ball. Mm -hmm. Or anything else in spare. If she were to get six on her first sp shot and miss it... G needs nine. A strike it would vault her into the championship game. I wonder what's going through Michelle Mullen's mind at this point, watching all these players struggle. Well, Michelle was playing a little farther outside the whole week, so she may just come out and uh, surprise us, stay out there and have a nice shot. was all she needed. Nikki G realizes it, so she stepped up in pressure situations in the last two matches, Leona, and he, she has delivered. Well, that's why she has 11 career titles. Sigh of relief. <laughs> Lori Nichols with a third place finish. Frustrated, you can see it written all over her face, trying to turn around the tide in the championship round. She's just been unable to do it. In 1986, she was so tough, you could not beat Lori Nichols on TV. Seems like it goes one way or another. Right now, Nikki G in the driver's seat. She'll take on 25-year-old Michelle Mullen for the championship here at Fairlane Shady Grove. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. The championship round finals of the $50,000 Lady Fairlanes Open have been brought to you by Fairlanes. By Mr. Coffee, maker of the iced teapot, the modern way to make old-fashioned iced tea. And by Extra Strength Roll Aids with 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. 
And welcome back, everyone. And, of course, that big check there worth $100,000. The Kmart Challenge should any of our ladies on the Ladies Pro Bowlers Tour shoot a perfect game during the championship round. You just go ahead and sign your name in there, Leila, 100,000 big ones. Wouldn't that be nice? And mm -hmm. uh, we have one more game that one of these players could win that. All right, we're ready for the championship game here. And Michelle Mullen will start things off on the left-hand lane. Michelle's fourth year on tour. As we mentioned before, she's only 25 years old. And this is her first time in the number one position. And uh, the lane automatically re-racked on her. And uh, that can throw you for a loop. <laughs> Not exactly the two way you want things to start. Up the track through the nose, we have... Uh, seen that scenario thus far this evening. I watched Michelle a little bit practicing here. She was awarded six practice balls. She could take them any way she wanted. She looked like she had a fairly good shot. However, that ball uh, hooked a little bit too much on her. Cross lane to the left of the three, but a uh, spare up for that 25-year-old from Maxson, Illinois south of Chicago. Now Nikki wanting to break that string of being the bridesmaid. Actually once is enough for that, right? <laughs> you bet. <gasps> Hitting outside the second arrow that time, Denny, right around the eight board. And we mentioned how uh, big a difference in the end result that only a board makes. Well, one board at 15 feet is probably about three boards this evening at uh, 50 feet, huh? That's right. And uh, that left her with a bucket. And I don't think Mickey's looking forward to shooting this pair. <laughs> Plenty of speed. Now, one thing's for sure, she's had a fair amount of practice. And she's been able to really pick up uh, the majority of the left-hand spares after uh, she missed the first few in the first couple games. Takes a look at the rack on 13 and decides uh, she wants a freshman. A very important match. There's a $4,500 difference between first and second place. She's already finished second this year, and the Robbie's open, so... One second place finish, as far as she is concerned, is enough for 1990. She was the top seed in that tournament as well. Dana Miller Mackey came from the fourth fifth position, first game, came up the ladder. From the looks of uh, the statistics, she really doesn't have a favorite lane. Eight strikes on each. It really appears, though, to be lane 14 is holding the line a bit better than lane 13. Lane 13 seems to be hooking a little bit earlier. It appears uh, Nikki got something in her eye at the time. And, of course, don't forget, uh, live top-ranked boxing coming your way immediately following the championship finals here. When the Lady Fair Lane's open. Al Bernstein and crew ready to uh, provide all the action. Setting the ball very short, catching the oil in the front part of the lane and just sliding right into the spare. All right, let's see if Michelle Mullen can get things started here. She's been waiting for the better part of an hour to get this shot, claiming her first title. Michelle was really hoping that uh, her family was going to be able to see her bowl live this evening. They were hooking up the cable or trying to get it hooked up. Her grandmother's been ill, and uh, she was hoping she'd get a chance to watch her bowl. Well, she averts the 2-8-10, but uh, the 2 8 7 stands. We saw Nikki miss this a little bit earlier on in match number two. Once again, wanting to hit on the right side of the spare. Look at Michelle's game, that five-step approach using all the approach. Very low, good knee bend, and good wrist release. 
Well, let's see if the three-time All-America out of the University of Illinois can convert to the 2-8-7. That's how you do it. Oh. Ooh, wrap the two-pin right around. So an open frame for Michelle in the second gives Nikki Giannullius the lead, a lead by a dozen sticks while she was sitting on the bench. It's a nice way to get a, a lead. Now here you do want to hit on the right side, but the ball just slid. It deflected off that two-pin rather than hitting the eight-pin. Had it hit the eight-pin, it would have d driven it into the seven. The angle has to be just perfect on that shot. Very tricky, tricky split. Trying to make those adjustments on the fly. Much better shot here and uh, nearly strikes, but leaves the half 10 on lane 13. You can see that Michelle is playing a little farther out, actually where Lori had moved out to, right around the seventh, sixth, seventh board, pointing more direct to the pocket. And that 238 average on lanes 13 and 14, by far and away the highest of our top five players. She obviously liked the pair. And now another miscue, a little bit uh, rattled at this point in the early stages of the championship game. Now as that ball did hit the 10 pin, it still is not awarded a spare. It did hit the channel first. Has to be thinking about just taking it a shot at a time at this point. And, uh, in a low-scoring affair, you're never out of it. No, the game can turn around at any point. Nikki leading by 23. Plenty of speed. Two pin remains. But uh, she's already missed one of those this evening as well. I think the oil is carried down far enough on the left side that uh, spares aren't quite as difficult. I think so. Uh, as we mentioned, as the more and more play is on the, the lanes, the conditioner does carry down. And, uh, How many pins advantage does somebody like Nikki have after three games on the championship round pair heading into just one game? Well, I really think she has uh, quite an advantage, Danny, because she's able to know, especially shooting spares, what the ball's going to do, whereas uh, Michelle could be wondering as far as shooting the 10 pin, is the ball going to slide or hook on her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a guessing game when you get three shots on either lane and go ahead and load it up after you've been waiting for an hour and 15 minutes. One other stat that uh, I'm sure that Michelle Mullen fans aren't particularly enamored with is the fact that out of four tries thus far this year, the top seed has won just once, 25% of the time. It's really not a high uh, percentage win position. <laughs> More times than not, those players come up from... Uh, the bottom positions and are able to really get locked in on the lanes. Up and at him and a strike for Nikki G in the fourth as she continues to kind of apply the pressure here in the championship game. Michelle Mullen really needing to get it started here in the fourth frame. She doesn't want to get too far behind. She is 22 pins down. Better roll on this shot. And the same result. Six pin jumps into the gutter. Once again, that half ten where the six pin just stays in the channel. Does not wrap around the ten. Does not get the ten out. The ball just not quite finishing hard enough. Just kind of in between. Not low enough in the pocket to rip the rack and not quite high enough to trip out the four. Right. Here you see the six pin just sit there. And she sticks at the line, and uh, a disastrous start for Michelle Mullen, who now misses back-to-back -back 10 pins and uh, basically handing away a title that she's really worked hard for this week. Really, it's a shame to be in the top position and, and like you said, work so hard for it, and she really put on the pressure last night and uh, was able to overcome it and keep her lead coming into tonight. Up a little high this time in the pocket and leaves the four pin. You can almost see the pressure in her face. And it, it builds as you open up uh, in your second frame because the only thing that goes through your head is you've just handed over ten pins to your opponent. Well, I think as a younger player, too, you want to just get off to a good start. Get through the first three or four frames, get loose, make some good shots, which she basically has. She just doesn't carry 
But you can't afford to miss spares, especially in a championship game, because good players will take advantage of that. You know, Michelle also getting a nice check last year, though. She finished second in the Seagram's Coolers U.S. Open, and that paid $20,000. So uh, she has finished second before. And Nikki G on a strike, leading by 33, and she could send everybody home a little early. She throws a couple more right here. Two ten, and as we have already mentioned, uh, nothing is a certainty here this evening. To convert the two ten spare, she would like to hit on the left side of the two pin, throwing it into the ten pin. From what we've seen her angle to the two pin, she should be able to pick this up. She's thrown enough shots in that direction. <laughs> She gave it the room, and that ball just uh, took a left turn. First open in the championship game for Nikki Giannoulias. It comes at the midway point, and the lead that was once 33 is now just 19. Here you can see she's actually trying to angle it over there, and it just hit that center of the lane right around the 12th, 13th board and said, I'm going left. See, we weren't kidding about setting it down a little short with those cross laners to the left. That ball will take off. Only leads by 19. And a strike as she comes back strong in the sixth. We'll take a break here midway through the championship game. Nikki G leading by 19. Michelle Mullen trying to come from behind. And while we're away, an excellent shot in the sixth for Michelle. You bet, just jumping right on the advantage here, and uh, it was great. She got the break, tripped out the four. And then uh, went Brooklyn, and uh, nearly knocked down the nine. That's again lane 13, appearing as it's hooking a little bit more. As you can see, she hit around the ninth, tenth board, and that ball just starts to take off left. I wonder if she made an adjustment or if she just yanked that. I think it looked like she yanked it. Mm -hmm. Looking for a double. Mm, nearly a cave-in shot. And she carried that earlier uh, tonight. Wasn't able to do it this time. Though. She has received uh, a fair share of breaks in her four games. Already has defeated Leanne Barrett, 213 to 184, and then knocked off Sharon Todd, 211 to 200, and then bested Lori Nichols, 189 to 177 actually survival of the fittest in uh, all three cases as uh, all three matches were relatively close. Yeah, last week it was the experienced Cindy Coburn Carroll who kind of hung on through all the problems to win. Pretty much the same thing here tonight. It's not easy out here on the women's tour. Michelle still has some time. As there you take a look at the scoreboard. Back-to-back 10-pin -back opens in the third and the fourth. That's spelled the 19-pin lead to Nikki. Really wanting to get on it here in the eighth frame. Not much time left. It's Michelle reevaluating what has happened and what she needs to do. Gotta forget about the frames before and try and shoot 193, which is what she could still shoot if she would strike out. And to force Nikki to double. was the dice-o-matic. May have been the best shot of the night for Nikki Giannoulias, who really put the clamp on there in the eighth. I think so. A lot of fingers, a lot of lift on that ball. And this is the results. Watch the five pin here. Go towards the seven, and everything blows out to the right. Crunch time for Michelle Mullen. Needs to answer the challenge, and she does with a blistering strike on the right-hand lane. Excellent shot, right again out 
inside around the seventh board coming into the pocket rather than hitting around the ninth or tenth board. A little farther out to the right, down line, and the ball makes a nice break right into the pocket. I think the key is, Dennis, to go down the boards, not point the ball across the boards. Got to give it some room, and she does. Does she carry the light hit? No. Ten pin stands, and what's going through her mind now? She's already missed a pair of those. It was a good shot. She knew it was good, and uh, now she really has to convert this spare. Battle of nerves right now. Stay with the shot, and she does. Gutsy cross lane, conversion of the 10 after a couple of misses. That's not what you want to leave. No, mind over matter in uh, that case. Well, to set up the scenario, the best game that Michelle could bowl now would be 173. Doesn't sound like much, but Nikki still has the ninth and the 10th yet to go here. And she has to fill both frames. the pocket and don't forget coming up momentarily next on ESPN live top rank boxing coming your way some outstanding cards uh, just about ready to get started here they're trying to hold off those guys from throwing the leather here for another minute or two so we can finish up the lady fair lanes open oh those boxers can hang on oh sure they can. plus they're in Tahoe sure the table for <laughs> five minutes right that could be costly yeah Really a gutsy shot here by Nikki in the ninth frame. She trusted it, and uh, I think that's really important. Could be trouble, though, as she just chopped the two off the eight. What did I tell you? Stranger things have happened. This will come down to the tenth frame. Should Nikki Giannoulias throw a double and any kind of count at all, she is a winner. However, Michelle Mullen still is alive in this one pretty amazing after missing three spares to still be alive in the championship match. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to vote a yes there. Usually three misses in the championship game and you're saying, excuse me, what flight reservations do I need for Hilton Head next week? Delivered all night long in the clutch. Excellent shot there, but a solid 10. Really a great shot on lane 13 because that hasn't been her best lane. Obviously her job right now, the chore at hand, pick up the 10, throw a strike and shoot 170 and force Michelle Mullen to double. Right here is the ball just doesn't quite make it hard enough into the pocket at half 10. professional shot. So that forces Michelle to at least double. But if I were Michelle Mullen right now, I would be saying, hey, this one's fate. Yeah. I opened the door, swung it wide open, both the doors to the barn, and uh, you know what? She didn't take it. I got a chance. Well, Michelle has hit lane 14 on both last two times that she was on it, so... If she could pick a lane, I think that would be the one she'd pick. It's got to give you some confidence. Tripped out the four in the six and then threw a very solid shot in the eight. Now well, kicking out the four pin. It wasn't pretty, but a game of 170 may be enough. Two strikes and eight it would give Michelle Mullen 171. Well, a lot of times that's how it should be, Denny, as that player gets up and throws a couple strikes to win.
Michelle Mullen waiting for the re-rack here in the 10th. Pressure builds. Beautiful shot, Danny. Beautiful, like she did last night. When she needed it against Lori Nichols, she just got up there and just threw a superb shot. That was absolutely perfect. And what's so mind-boggling is, hey, why didn't you throw those throughout the first part of the game? Sometimes you need the pressure to build and get that adrenaline going. Michelle Mullen has the comeback win of the year. Really needs to take her time on this shot, Denny. Pin count is so important here. She needs eight. Michelle Mullen comes from behind to win her first ever LPBT championship. 